Uh, I have a suction cup now. We actually have several of these. I'm sure you guys do too. Uh, you can also get the ones that, uh, someone find me the ones that are for the, uh, uh, the plate glasses. Anyway, but if I take this and I put it on the table there, I can prove that there's no adhesion to the table. Well, because it's wet. I mean, there's obviously no adhesion there. But it's actually you know, hard to get up unless I pull up a side and let the air underneath it. I put the air underneath it, it comes right up. We have bigger ones that actually are, these are for uh, moving plate glass. And it takes over 200 pounds of force to pull those apart unless I just take the air, I just let the air in. Because there's air pressure on both sides. When I put them together, there's no air in between them, or just a little bit. I go like this and I create a vacuum because it's actually pulling the suction cups on the inside out, increasing the volume without increasing the matter, which decreases the pressure. Now, another example of air pressure and its effects, I have an Erlenmeyer flask. And what seems to work really well, um, a playing card because it's kind of waxed on both sides. Obviously, it doesn't last too many times. Put that on here as long as it has a good seal, it will hold up. Now you might say, but there's something in there. Yes, but the pressure of that water is not as great as the pressure of the air. The pressure of the air is 1 times 10 to the 5th newtons per meter squared, 1 atmosphere, and that water is not 1 atmosphere. It's actually less than that. It turns out if you do the equation, rho GH, where rho for water is 10 to the 3rd, G is roughly 10 to the 1st, that gives us 10 to the 4th. That means we have one more 10 that we can put in there, which would be 10 meters of water. So it turns out that the atmosphere can hold up 10 meters of water, which is why a suction pump can only pull up 10 meters. Of course, I let a little bit of air in there. See, it's still holding up because there's just a little bit of air in there. But I add a little more. At some point, that air pressure on top plus the water be greater than the ability of the air. And there it was. It didn't take a lot of air pressure on the top plus the weight of the pressure of the water to equal atmospheric pressure. Cut. I mean, what's right? Okay, let's introduce what we have here. We have a large container here. It's actually from a water cooler uh, container. We had a large tube going to a small tube. We've got a crimp right here. Now, I don't have any kind of uh, epoxy here or anything, which I will eventually just duct tape, so it's going to leak a little bit. And then uh, we're going to drop some water in there. So go ahead and Joelle's going to do that. This is Andrew who's holding the large water. Okay. I'm kind of holding the water in here. Okay, now that we've got enough water in it, now we're going to dump a whole bunch of uh, beads in there. And we're going to watch the beads so and pull it in so you can see what happens between the different size tubes. Okay, here we go. Watch how slow they're going through here. Notice how fast they're going through here. Slow at the top, fast down here. And this proves something that's known as the continuity equation, AV equals AV, so that the flow rate has to be the same. This is conservation of mass. Whatever goes in has to come out. In other words, for the water to get through this tube, Okay. For the water to get through this tube, it has to be going faster because the same amount of mass is moving. And so that's why it's going faster in the small tube. Stop. Okay. Now we look at this. This is known as a venturi. We have a large tube here and a small tube here. And we have water in all three of them. And you can see how the water is free to flow. Okay. I'm going to blow in one side and we're going to get a close-up of what happens to the three tubes. Are you focusing on the middle tubes there? Okay. From the first video, what we saw was that in the skinny part, it speeds up because the same amount of mass has to go through. And notice that the pressure here is greater than the pressure here, or the pressure in the, in the, uh, in the smaller tube is less. Stop. All right, now we're going to talk about Bernoulli's effect, um, which talks about uh, fluids going faster. We already saw that there was less pressure due to uh, faster moving fluid. We'll have a piece of paper. It, right now it has atmospheric pressure on both sides, which causes it to fall due to its weight. But if I blow over the top of it, now we have a fast moving fluid and a non-moving fluid. And 
you would think that my, that my air would push it downward, but because it's moving faster, it has less pressure and the, less pre the lower pressure actually pulls it up. Another example of that, we have a couple of light coffee cans here made out of plastic on a low friction surface made out of straws. And if I blow into that, it's pretty obvious that if I blow this way, I can make them move. But if I blow between them, watch what happens. Straight. Once again, because we need to verify. Again, fast moving fluid causes them to pull together. Stop. All right, now we're going to do the same idea of Bernoulli's effect, only we're going to use a vacuum cleaner. We're going to get this thing started. It might be a little hard to hear me once we get going. Okay, now I'm going to start off with a very, very light ball and I'm going to put it in the airstream. So its force of weight is being the weight is going to be opposed by the airstream. And now I'm going to turn the airstream. And we'll notice it appears to be hanging in the air. Its force of weight is pulling it down, trying to pull it out of the airstream. So the air is going over the ball, I can feel it up here, which is pulling, causing faster air, has lower pressure, and so the pressure here pushes it back into the airstream. Because it's so light and it doesn't require a lot of pressure difference, I can actually turn this significantly. It kind of looks like magic, doesn't it? I can do that also with a heavier ball, but it won't be able to go as far. Here's a wooden ball. because of the friction of the air.